Welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, we're going to try to answer a few of your questions on the build -a pie script. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get started, I've got to give a shout out to these ladies and gentlemen. They are my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So the first thing I kind of want to go over is the hotspot. Now there's a script that runs, uh, it runs at boot and then it runs every five minutes after boot if you use the build a pie script uh, to install the hotspot. That script runs to check and see if it can see a known Wi-Fi connection. So uh, let's say you set it up for your shack uh, to connect to your shack's Wi-Fi. So if it sees that connection, then it's going to go ahead and connect to that Wi-Fi signal. Once it's removed far enough from that Wi-Fi uh, that it can no longer see that signal, it will recognize that it cannot see it and then it will generate the hotspot. You can't do both of those at the same time. Now, let's assume that you're in hotspot mode and you need to go ahead and add a new Wi-Fi SSID uh, so that you can get your Raspberry Pi connected to that new uh, Wi-Fi hotspot. So you're going to want to run the command sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash wpa underscore supplicant forward slash wpa underscore supplicant dot conf. We'll go ahead and hit return on that. And once you get that command entered in, you'll be brought into this file here. Now I'm going to move this down just a little bit so you can see this a little better. What you would want to do is you would want to enter uh, this information here with a new uh, network address. So you can, uh, you, you can just duplicate this information down below. So if we wanted to put something in here new, we would start with the uh, network equals and then the curly bracket. And then next line, you would give it your SSID, uh, the, the new SSID you wanted to connect to. PSK is your uh, passkey or your, uh, your password for the uh, Wi-Fi hotspot that you want to connect to. And then uh, your key management should be WPA hyphen PSK. Uh, once you type that in and save that information, Go ahead and take this out right now. You'd want to press Control X, Y, and Enter. Now, in five minutes, it would go ahead and read that new file. If it saw that hotspot, it would go ahead and connect to it. If you want to force the hotspot to check right this second without waiting, you can run sudo forward slash USR forward slash bin forward slash auto hotspot capital N. And if you go ahead and hit return, it's going to do the check. And you'll see mine says already connected to a Wi-Fi network. Uh, if it didn't see one, it would have created the hotspot. If it did see a new one that you had entered, then it would go ahead and connect to that new one. Now, one other question that uh, I get quite a bit is... Oh, did want to say clear. Uh, one other question I get quite a bit is how do I change the name of the hotspot? So by default that is RPI hotspot I believe. If you want to change that what you can do is and I believe I've already changed it on this particular machine you're going to run sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash host apd forward slash host apd dot com You'll go ahead and hit the return key. And I actually, I haven't changed it on this one. Uh, but here's the SSID that it broadcasts out. So RPI hotspot. Uh, so you can change that to be whatever you want to. If you need to change the password uh, for your hotspot, this is where you would do that. That is the passphrase that you see right here. Uh, there's my current passphrase to connect is KM4ACK1234. So that's a little bit more information on the hotspot. 
Now, the next thing I wanted to talk about was uh, the guys that are running the ICOM 7000 series rigs. I have not been able to give you guys a lot of help on that simply because I don't own one of those rigs. I did, however, receive this email the other day from Bob, uh, Alpha Lima 7 Mike Hotel. Bob runs a 7100, uh, the IC7100, and he was having trouble getting RDOP to transmit. And what he suggests is this right here. What you actually have to do is you have to uh, tell it what your cat control cable is. So I, I believe this is correct. And uh, Bob, if you're watching and I'm, I'm giving some bad information, please leave it down in the comments. But I think I've got a grasp of what's going on here. Uh, this is your cat control cable address. So the dash C uh, forward slash DEV forward slash TTY USB zero. Now this over here is the PTT key and unkey command. So the dash K is what you would plug in uh, for PTT to activate it. And then when you're ready to release that PTT, it's this command here. So hopefully that'll give you guys uh, some help that's running these ICOM rigs uh, because I, I'm, I wish I could help you guys, but not owning one, I just don't have uh, one of those available to test. Uh, so hopefully this will kind of point you guys in the right direction. Now on those same lines, let's take a look and I'll leave a link to this website uh, as well. But this is all about RDOPC, and this comes from John Wiseman's page. And if I'm not mistaken, right here is where John talks about uh, that same command that we just looked at. And he says that this example is for most ICOM radios. So hopefully that's going to help uh, those guys that own those ICOM rigs uh, be able to get this working. Now, if you are using the PAT menu system uh, with, the, with the script, let me get over to my PAT menu uh, directory here. And I'm going to, let's see, let's do a nano config. Okay, so right here on this line, right here, it says RDOP equals this is the start command. Uh, this is what the patent menu script uses for starting the RDOP modem. Uh, so you could add that additional information to the end of this line. Just make sure you don't, uh, well, sorry about that, jumped around a little bit on me. Make sure you don't delete the opening or closing quotation marks. So if you plug that new startup command in here, then Pat Menu will use that anytime you call for the RDOP modem. One other thing while we're in here, uh, I've had a couple of questions. First, someone has asked me, is rig control required with this setup? And it's absolutely not required with a setup. If you don't want to bother with rig control and you just want to run manually, inside this uh, Pat Menu config file, you're going to scroll down and where it says rig control equals yes, you want to change that to rig control equals no. In fact, I believe default comes with no. Uh, if you do that when you're adding aliases to Pat Winlink and things like that, it will not include those rig control commands. Now, another uh, question I've had is, is FL rig required uh, to, run, to run this setup? And let me tell you a little bit about why I chose that. FL rig, if we get it working and configured and we decide to change radios, it'll make it quite a bit quicker. Um, if it's a similar radio, let's say you're upgrading from the ICOM 7200 to the ICOM 7300, those are gonna have very, very similar commands. Uh, so going over and changing those in FL rig might be the only thing you have to do to get that to working. Now, if you're going from, uh, you know, say a 857D over to the ICOM, it's gonna be a bit more work than that. But if you don't want to use FL rig at all, I do give an example inside of the config file of how you can go straight from rig control or the, the Hamlib uh, side of things straight to the radio and bypass uh, the, the FL rig. So that is this statement here 
where you see uh, rig control hyphen M122. That's the model number for the 857. And I've kind of covered how to set this up in some of my other videos. So go back to those, especially the three part series on uh, building a Raspberry Pi uh, from scratch uh, and doing that manually. Uh, if you wanted to use that, you would need to take off uh, this pound sign right here. So that would uncomment. Um, sorry about that, guys. I got it. That's kind of weird. There we go. You would take off the pound sign at the very beginning of uh, that line, and then you would want to comment out this line here. This is the line here that says pass those rig control commands through FL Rig. So it's all in uh, how you want to run it, but FL Rig is absolutely not required for this setup. Then inside of JS8 Call or WSJTX, instead of selecting FL Rig for your, uh, for your radio inside of those apps, you would actually go ahead and select the actual radio that you wanted to use. Okay, so one other question I wanted to cover before we wrap this up. Uh, some people have had issues with the M0 IAX uh, tool. So I want to take a minute and kind of explain what's going on with that. There was a change in JS8 call as far as what came out of the box by default uh, and what ports we interfaced with. So I'm going to go ahead and open up JS8 call and go up to file and the settings tab. And then I'm going to come over to reporting right here. This UDP server port, out of the box now, this comes set to 2242, if I remember correctly. And because of that, uh, it, it messes things up that uh, Mark wrote uh, with some of the JS8 call tools. So I think he's corrected that with the GPS side of things, but then uh, it hasn't been updated for the, the uh, messaging application that he wrote that interfaces with this. Uh, so if you're having issues with it, here's what I recommend uh, if you just built this. I would go ahead and change this port number from 2242 to 2237. Also, make sure these three boxes are checked. If these three are not checked, then his two tools will not work uh, out of the box because the uh, the API server is not listening inside of JS8 call. And go ahead and minimize JS8 call. Now I'm over in the bin directory, so uh, I'll tell you what, let's just do this. So to get here, I just went uh, from the home directory, CD space bin, and we'll list out those files. What you see here is a config and settings.py. We're gonna go in there and make one quick change. Uh, so we'll say nano config and settings.py. Go ahead and hit return. Right up close to the top, you'll see server port. Now, by default, again, this is probably going to be set to 2242. You want to change it to 2237. That will make it match the port that we just set inside of JS8 call. Now, after you've made that change, you'll want to press Control X, Y, and Enter to get out of that. So now let's just run a quick test. I'm going to open up his GPS tools first and tell it to get the grid. Oh, I thought I had a GPS fix. Oh, there we go. All right, and after it has acquired the, uh, the information from the GPS, I'm going to say send that information over to JS8 call. Now, I really don't want it to transmit right now, uh, so sending it over uh, will update it, and, uh, but won't transmit out anything over the air. And you can see right here, right up at the top, we have updated our GPS location. So let's go run one more test here, make sure everything is working. I'm going to close out of that, and this time, I am going to open up uh, JS8 Call Messenger. And we're just going to verify that uh, this works. So we'll give it a quick email address. So me at me.com. And the message will just be test. And again, I'm not going to transmit this out. I'm just going to say set the text in JS8. And sometimes these will take a couple of minutes uh, before you get a pop-up box telling you that your message has been sent over to JS8, but just be patient for a second 
and it should come up for you. We'll go ahead and bounce over to JSC Call, and you can see that my message is there ready to transmit. Now, should Mark update that software going forward uh, to reflect 2242 uh, or the 2242 port in both applications? This might not be necessary, but if you're having trouble with it, there's some places you can kind of poke around and take a look at things. And one last uh, bit before we leave, I am working on, uh, so, so I've had some guys that tell me that Conky, uh, the information that runs over here, let me close some of this so I can give you guys a better look. Uh, some of this information that runs over here on the right hand side of the screen, I can't make that information scrollable and what I built is designed for, I believe it's 1920 by 1080 screen resolution. If you're using something smaller, it's going to cause this to go off of the screen. What I'm working on right now is uh, putting uh, three different sizes of Conky out there and resizing things with screen resolution and then giving you guys a simple script that you can run uh, that will try to determine your screen size and apply the uh, appropriate one for you. So that's uh, something to be looking for uh, coming, coming out soon. And then version two of the build a pie script is probably 95% complete. I just need to do a little bit more testing on that. Uh, that will include uh, building FL Digi from source. Uh, I believe we've got some SSTV, uh, app, uh, uh, an SSTV application in there. Uh, we've got gpredict in there. I believe we've got propagation prediction software that can be loaded. So it's going to be quite a few more things coming uh, in version 2. So look for that in the coming weeks. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up before you head out, and we will see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.